Having a bit of a slow start with this one. I have all sorts of reservations in my mind right now about Whopper Plopper. They got like a curved tail. The plopper, po the propeller plopper is bent. I need to figure out a way to bend some Lex and polycarbonate. I got, I wanna do this in kind of like an ultra light bait. I'm gonna try to catch a trout with this. Go to a trout stream, catch a trout with an ultra light Whopper Plopper. That's the goal of this video. And this is a one day. I guess the point of one days are to get started, adapt, improvise, and overcome, catch a fish. Let's do this. I think that plopper is way oversized, but I like the size of this bait that I drew out here. It's less than two inches long. So it's definitely an ultra light lure. I'm gonna be making this out of balsa wood. I'm gonna do some carvings in the head there. It'll be a good looking bait. It is just the functionality I'm slightly concerned with. I need to get this to work good. I'm gonna have a brass tube in the tailpiece here as a bushing for the wire so this back piece spins easily. Let's get this cut out. This piece of balsa is a half inch thick. That's a pretty good shape. This flat part on the back piece here is where I'm gonna actually connect the propeller. I have to taper this bait down, definitely towards the tail. This needs to come to a point back here. Can save that for later. I'm gonna sand that down. I realized I'm the worst at telling you guys what time it is on these one day videos. Even though I'm the only one who makes a lure in one day and posts it to YouTube. I'm the best and the worst. You guys know it's easier to make a big bait than make a tiny little one like this and make it look good. It'd be much easier to make this five inches long. This is gonna be complicated to heat bend this around something to get it to be the correct shape. Good gravy. And then I have to cut like a curved slot. I'm not doing this one, I'm gonna go with this one. And that one, this one's a little bit long, but I'll just sand it down later. Let's cut that out and go for something. Okay, we're gonna get back to this a little later. I'm gonna finish cutting the joints on the body of this bait, doing a little bit more work on it, and getting it ready to tackle this beast. So what this bait definitely needs to, uh, for the propeller on the back to spin well is a bushing straight through the center of this tiny piece. So I need to draw out the hole to the correct size and cut this bushing which is just a brass tube a very very small brass tube and insert it into this piece and it's going to stick out the back a little ways and that's what the wire is going to go through and there'll be a bead and then loop it off and it's secure and then in the body of this bait it's going to be through wire so a line connection a hook hanger and then that that same wire is just going to come straight out the back right in the center so everything's lined up right somewhat complicated for a one day build but we're good it's never a comfortable feeling drilling things this small holding on to the other piece with your hand Not bad, it's pretty centered. Now I'm gonna cut a slot into the front part of this bait for the line tie and the wire, you know, the hook hanger, everything. The wire harness is what I'm saying.
And for wire, I'm gonna be using this, uh, what is this stuff? It's stainless steel wire that I've gotten off of eBay before. 0 0.032 inch diameter stainless steel wire. I don't buy it by the gauge, I buy it by the diameter in inches, I guess. Time to get to bending. There's a line tie, there's a better shot of the line tie. Now I gotta bend that down. I never feel really confident when I'm bending wire like this. I don't think that's achievable. <laughs> Just do your best. So I have the line tie where I want it and the wire coming out of the bottom where I want it. You just grab it right there, and bend around it. And the last bend I'm doing is just gonna be a straight wire coming out of the butt of this bait. That hook hanger on the bottom is pretty big. I guess I could cut into this slot a little deeper to fix that. Not on the ends, but just kinda hollow out the bottom of this slot with the saw tilted into it, you know, so I'm just using the corner. Oh, that's a lot better. That was worth fixing. It only took like 10 seconds. So we already got a little spinny thing on the back. After doing all that, it needs to be adjusted perfectly so it's centered, but I'll do that when I glue in this wire to the front piece. It spins pretty freely. Now, before I glue this wire in, I'm gonna drill out a little spot for a little bit of lead. And I mean a little bit. I don't want this bait sinking. The last few attempts I've tried to make a floating bait, they've sank. Like, what kind of bait maker am I if I can't get a bait to float, you know? Don't answer that. And so, I'll be going with a quarter inch bit, drilling it out just deep enough to where I can put a few drops of lead in this bait. So the belly stays down while the propeller on the back does its thing. Just getting those torn fibers out of the hole so the lead can fill cleanly. So I think what I'm gonna do is glue in the front, then glue in this piece or this part, and then center this wire perfectly and glue that in, and then just kind of smother that slot and glue, put some lead in it, baking soda and super glue. This is going pretty well. This is going better than I thought it would. I'm enjoying this. I hope you are too. Got some different super glue, medium, thickness. I also got the thick thickness. I'm going back to thin. Can't beat thin. Just really gets in there, you know? It's like water. If this works good, that'll be crazy. An ultra light whopper plopper. Is this illegal to make somebody else's bait in a different way and say that you... I'm not gonna sell it. I did it with a Roman made once and they banned me from seeing their Instagram account, so they didn't appreciate that, but I have done this before <laughs> with other people's baits. I don't mean nothing by it, guys. I'm just... I'm just a garage bait maker. All right, that wire's glued in and it's lined up. This is awesome. It's not done. I shouldn't jinx this. I'm gonna cut this wire down a little bit. Don't need two feet, but I'm gonna leave a lot because I need to, when this is all done, tie it off. And it's nice to have a lot of wire when you're tying something off and wrapping it. Lead pot, it's not even plugged in yet. Man, I need to get it together. Now in all of the years I've been working with Lexan Polycarbonate, I have not tried to heat bend it. Um, good grief. This is the little piece we're working with here. I have this punch pan. I think I'm gonna heat this up, the end of it up. Not like glowing red hot, just heat it up with a propane torch and place the pen just like this. I mean, I gotta do this real good. Probably the tip right here is gonna go at the corner down here. I'm gonna go like that. And then I'm just gonna push this over. I'll probably have some heat applied to the plastic piece itself too. Then I'm gonna push this over so it wraps around a little bit. I gotta hold it up like that and it'll be the correct shape. Wish me luck. I'll be wearing gloves the whole time too, so my finger dexterity will be compromised. I hope this works first time. Do some slow heating up. I'm gonna get this really hot and let it cool off. Yeah, it's already moving. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I think I did it. It's ugly. The heat really got to it, but it's the correct shape, and I'm not gonna try again. I'm just gonna go with the ugly piece. Good enough. So also on a real whopper plopper, the way that this propeller is inserted into the back piece is on an angle like that. And so looking at it straight on, you can see how it catches water towards the back. And then as well as this little curved piece up here, that's gonna really throw the water. So that's what we're going with. This is what we got. Now I just need to cut that slot and glue that propeller in. I'm cutting all the way down to that brass tube. I want as much of a slot as possible to glue this little fin in. I don't want it falling out. <sighs> that 
That works. Sweet. Okay, just a few drops now. Four drops. Perfect. This is working out really well. Got that all smoothed off. I said I was gonna make some carving details into this bait, like the gills and stuff, so. That is what I'm gonna do next. This is gonna look good. Well, first of all, I need to place the eyes here. Mark out a good eye placement and drill out those sockets. You know, if I carve detail into this, I'm going to regret it because I think I'm going to be able to paint the detail and the gills and stuff into this bait a lot cleaner. This is balsa wood, so I'm going to paint it. Sorry, no carving. I don't know why I'm saying sorry. Time to seal the wood. I'm going to use super glue for that. Do not hold this thing under your nose when you're applying super glue. Otherwise, you're pretty much huffing glue. And you don't want to be like that, you know? Don't be a glue huffer. Drugs aren't cool, kids but I don't care if you stay in school. You can drop out and make fishing lures, like me. <laughs> I didn't drop out of school, I'm just kidding, but I don't care if you do. We have some strange talks on this channel. Right, I'm just gonna hold this tailpiece by the propeller, try not to get a lot of glue on it. I don't wanna get it in the hole, and I kinda just did. I'm gonna use another wire to clean that out. You want it smooth in there. Yeah, it's still smooth, we're good. And just like that, you would never guess that this is made out of the softest wood in the world. Because of the super glue. But it is. It adds a whole bunch of strength to the wood. I'm gonna sand this down a little bit and get it smooth and then we're gonna paint. I should show you the time. 1246, chugging right along. Okay, new objective is to find what a good paint scheme would be for a whopper plopper. I'm gonna be trying to catch trout. I know natural stuff for trout is a thing. I'm gonna look up what paint schemes are for whopper ploppers in the first place. They got a lot of perch. They got a lot of just like white shad kind of stuff. I see a craw, uh, just random paint schemes. They got everything. That means I need to be creative and come up with something good. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I don't need to be creative. I can just choose one of these. This one's good. It's like a dirty, messy gold. The scales aren't super clearly defined, but they're there and there's a lot of holographic to it. I'm gonna do this one. I think I'm gonna paint just from a black on the top to a white on the belly and add this. I taped off that propeller on the back. I just realized how hard it's gonna be to clear coat this tailpiece because uh, there's a lot I don't want clear coat kidding on. Oh well, we'll tackle that when we get to it. So here's the original drawing. I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit. That is what I'm gonna use as a stencil to put this foil stuff on the bait. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna apply it. Heat definitely works the best for this stuff. Otherwise, it's almost impossible to apply it perfectly. There. I said I was going to paint some gills, so I'm going to try to paint some gills. This is actually a stencil for a large fin, but I'll be using it for gills on this bait. I know that looks like nothing right now, but I needed that black on the background because I'm gonna do white over that and that's what's gonna give it some clear definition. Now the last little detail I'm gonna do before I glue the eyeballs on is add a little bit of crimson to the gills on the bottom. You really want to make sure your airbrush is behaving before you do a little detail like this.
perfect. First of all, I'm gonna clear coat the back piece, or at least I'm gonna apply the UV clear coat to the back piece first. I just left the back piece black, by the way. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna apply the UV clear coat with a brush, and I have the brass tube on the back taped off still. I'm gonna apply it, let it drip, take off the tape, and then put it in the tank. That way I keep clear coat off of everything I don't want it on. Still not perfectly certain that this is gonna go well, but that's my technique. I'm gonna dip this. It's gonna hang up for like less than a minute, and then I'm putting it in the tank. I don't care about drip with this because I want the clear coat to be thick. I actually just put it in the tank. I didn't even wait. They're both in the tank already. No messing around. I'm gonna give that a half hour, put it together, and go fishing. Go trout fishing. Gotta use that trout stamp I bought this year. Well, I took them both out of the tank. The clear coats are set, ready to go. I have a pretty significant drip to clean up off the nose of this one, but looks good. So I use a fresh blade. I just keep hacking away at the nose here until it's free. There, I got that wire free, but I need to uh, clean up the line tie so it's open and looks better than that. And a drill helps this process. Just don't slip and scratch your bait. You get it in like that and then you twist the bait a little bit. That really cleans it up well to that extent and then just with a knife and you got your pliers and you can clean it up the rest of the way. That's how I clean up my line ties and hook hangers. This is a pretty critical step and I want it to look nice. So I'm bending it down first a little bit, grabbing it further up and then bending it back around so the loop is kind of centered. I'm gonna go clamp this loop in a vise and then twist the wire around. Can't believe I didn't just record that, but you guys can get the gist. I clamped that loop in the vise right there and then I just loop de doop de it. Now I'm gonna snippy snippy it. So just for the sake of, uh, I don't know, an insurance to make sure this bait works, I left a whole bunch of tolerance in this back piece. On the real Whopper ploppers, they have super tight tolerances and it looks really good, but I totally didn't do that. I gave myself a lot of room. But it works, and it looks beautiful. Let's go see how it works with water instead of me blowing on it. I always get to this stream and it just looks pathetic. Like, there can't be anything more than like a six inch trout in here. Might be able to get a six inch trout to bite a whopper plopper. It's worth a shot. I gotta look for the holes and stuff and find good spots. A lot of moving today. Let's do this. Ooh, had a hit. They keep missing. It's good to know there's trout in here though. Got one. Wet my hand. Oh no. It was a brook trout. And I lost it. <laughs> That's too bad. It's the first ever brook, brook trout I would have caught. Let's keep going. Yeah, I think he was just right here after this drop off looking for food to ambush last cast right here let's go to a different creek i mean i pretty much caught a trout i know it doesn't count but i touched one i touched a trout i can say that Can you guys hear the plops? 
They're super quiet, just tiny little plops. I can hear them. You guys probably can't because I can barely hear those. Oh, I just saw a fish. Ooh, I wasn't even paying attention. Oh, it's the second fish I lost today. It was a pike. No. Oh, that hurts. Another one. Do not lose this one. Ah, oh, got a small mouth. That's a relief to get this fish after losing two. It's just a little small mouth, but well earned. And it's official. Uh, small mouth like whopper ploppers. I could have said brook trout like whopper ploppers if I caught that brook trout and pike like whopper ploppers, but obviously small mouth like whopper ploppers. Let's see what else we can get here. Oh yeah, and challenge complete, 544. Last spot. I'm trying today is the pond. Probably just gonna fish here till I run out of batteries. Nice night for fishing. Yep, tip. Tip. Back door. Back door. Get out. You butthead. Come on. Chip, I gave you a strawberry last bit. No, no. Come here. Come. You got a strawberry in the last video, Chip. So that smallmouth was all that we could muster today. I couldn't believe how finicky those trout were. We got one to actually commit and bite really well. I don't know. It went from like for hours I was just looking for little deeper parts of the creek to cast my bait over. And once in a while I'd get a little splash of a hit. It wasn't, it was nothing significant. But then I went upstream quite a ways and I found this spot where there were multiple brook trout just swarming, like you could see them swimming around really fast everywhere. And a particular spot where there's a drop off and there's a bunch of brook trout in there. And multiple times I got hits and only one time I got a hookup, brought it in, lost it. But then they got wise to the bait and they didn't even care. They got to the point where all they did was just look at the, look at the bait and they didn't do anything. Trout, man. I feel like I could have caught one. I almost feel like I shouldn't have left the trout stream. I should have just stayed there and tried to catch one all day. I should have had a net. I'm going to get a trout net. Oh well. Next bait. We're going to catch a trout. Next video. Maybe. And yeah, don't hold me to that. I don't know. Soon. We will catch a trout. On to the next bait. I like this. That's a good tripod. It's dirty, huh? Yeah.